well. I'm 16 years old and I'm a seventh form student studying at correspondence school. I'm very interested in education, uh, particularly the secondary school system and the things that are wrong with New Zealand secondary schools in general. Um, and I'm generally interested in uh, the kind of society we have and the kind of people we're producing. What started you questioning the system, the education system here? Uh, well, I think it was the obvious thing to uh, send most secondary students off on the track, things like the hair restrictions, the ridiculous little things that, that stand out, um, hair restrictions, uniforms, um, caning, this sort of thing. Were you influenced at all by the movements overseas? I'm corresponding with students who organise uh, big national secondary student organisations in America, and uh, they have pretty well everything that we're, we're trying to get in New Zealand and it's very, you know, it's very exciting to see what's going on over in countries like that. Schools, the root cause is that the schools um, simply um, don't cater for a democratic society, uh, that the schools um, don't respect individuality, uh, that they, they really seem to harken back to a more archaic system which we should have got away with by now. Well, somebody said in the English Radio Times that it could be described as uh, ill preparation for democracy in a semi-dictatorship. Is this what you feel? Mm, this, this is precisely the thing. Uh, there's, there's, uh, there have been some very good books written over the last few years by members of the PPTA and American Observers in New Zealand um, uh, about this question, pointing out quite clearly that you know it's totally incongruous to educate people for a democratic society and, and what boils down to an oligarchy. What about the, the point, though, that you've got always a situation where the teacher has to get across a certain message, she has to inculcate certain things in the mind of, of the people she's with, and a state of anarchy therefore can't exist, or everyone's time's wasted? Mm, this is uh, fair enough. You see, what, uh, we agree that an education process is going on in the schools, but there's one very important thing to remember about education, and that is that anything that you are force-fed at a school You'll, you'll break away from as soon as you leave that school. Um, education is a process that, process that comes from within the student himself. And uh, so, you know, that the, the purpose of the teacher is to encourage education um, sprouting in the students. It's not to sort of trust some ideas on it. This implies that the teacher-pupil relationship is a close one. How can this be when your classes are, are of necessity? 36, 40? Well, we'd like to think that they're not of necessity that they it's a disaster when you have a class of 40 students because of course, uh, especially when the teacher has several of these classes to handle each day because of course he can't come down to a, a working understanding of, of what makes all these people go, of uh, what kind of things they're interested in. Does, does he not agree that, that one has to discipline the body in order to discipline the mind? <laughs> um, yes, this is true, but... Uh, it depends what kind of discipline you're talking about, doesn't it? See, I would say that true discipline can only come from the person himself and that, that any exterior discipline is bound to fall down in the end. How do you stop a person talking in class? <laughs> well, I would, I would say that this problem um, shouldn't arise in a reasonable situation, that uh, if, a person, if a person feels like talking, then he should be welcome to talk. Um, ah, but, but yes, but he, he, he should be asked to. No, hang on. The thing is that he should be asked to to leave the classroom situation if, if he's obviously sort of disrupting a fair process that's going on. Uh, you don't you don't sort of haul him out and cane him and tell him he's, he's not welcome to speak, not welcome to say something. Well, what happens if this happens every every class? Do you have to send him out of the class? Do you think that's that's quite sufficient discipline? Don't you think it should be taken further? No, I would say in that case that, that uh, the student has, has an obvious problem in um, his relation to the education system so that, uh, you know, you'd look into deeper and see what, what's annoying him about the education system and uh, whether he's perhaps in the wrong kind of school environment. Uh, uh, what, obviously, he's probably learning the wrong kind of things. I mean, if he's not interested in what's going on in class, then, then obviously he's not, he's not getting an education. Yeah, I think he's got a parental problem. Yes, well, that, that's quite possible too, you see. It's not a matter of taking over from the parents so much as uh, the school should quite definitely offer um, some kind of help. This is one of our aims, is to, is to set up a, a full and adequate 
uh, counselling service which uh, gives advice on this sort of things and to quote from our constitution where students can be encouraged to learn what they wish to learn and also to learn how to learn. I think you know this is sort of covering the kind of thing you're talking about. It's all very well about talking about student rights, <laughs> but they, they forfeit them, don't they? Well, they forfeit, they forfeit their rights. By, by exercising them, I, I would say that if you forfeit rights by, by exercising them in a reasonable situation, then you didn't have any rights, you see. Yeah. Do, do you agree that rights are earned and not... Um, no, if, if rights... You see, if rights are earned, then they aren't rights, are they? If you have to, if you have to, full, if you have to fulfill some condition in order to be... Uh, in order to have a right recognised, then it wasn't a right, it was, it was merely... Uh, a prize for fulfilling that condition. Uh, these are, I mean, it's a basic right of all human beings to be allowed to live. They, they don't have to, they don't have to fulfil certain conditions to be allowed to do that. You see, uh, and the same applies to any basic right. Yeah, but what your verse is saying is that although you go to school to learn, you're also there to teach the teacher how to teach. Uh, you're also there to contribute to the education process into that stage. Would, would you say then that a person at the age of 15 knows enough to be able to go up to a teacher and tell him that he's doing his job wrong? He, he knows enough to go up and, and say what he feels is wrong with the classroom situation because he's in it. Whether he's right or wrong is another question and that, and that will obviously come out in the discussion with the teacher. If the teacher's ideas are so much more realistic and mature, then obviously the student's not going to get far with his, with his discussion. Um, whose responsibility is it to teach values? Because values surely must be taught. Uh, <coughs> values, values uh, to be real values can only come from within uh, the person himself. Um, always, I mean, to, this is basic that you can't, you can never force your values on another person except by, you know, a highly detailed process of brainwashing. But how, can't you save someone from making a mistake they could later regret when you can go well, ahead and they can't? Oh, sure, you can. You can try and uh, you can try and argue it out with them. But I mean, uh, you could go on. If, if you're talking about forcing people, you could go on doing this right through life. In fact, you could you could have the state system uh, sit down and sort out what jobs everyone's going to take and say, well, look, I'm afraid society's going to fall to pieces unless unless we have 11 more carpenters this year, and therefore you 11 boys are going to be carpenters and, and this is the best thing you'll find that's most fulfilling in the long run. No, but if, if, if surely biologically a child of 14 or 15, or a young person of 14 or 15, is going through a tremendous upheaval biologically mm. and emotionally. Therefore, they are turned gassy often and uh, mm. want mm -hmm. to be. When in actual fact they could be so much better if they didn't. If they could see ahead, and of course they can't. And you try to with that and therefore is it a sin? Oh yes, it, it quite definitely is. I mean, uh, you say they can't see ahead. Um, but of course from their point of view they can see ahead and they can see ahead only too well. Uh, that, you know, that, that they dislike the system and that the further, the longer they stay in it, the worse it's going to get for them as a person. Um, I think every person should have the right to make up their mind what, what kind of a life they're going to lead, you know. But, mm -hmm. Uh, I could talk to you for an hour, but... Well, we're going to all have to be terribly quick because it's 19 minutes to 6 already. Well, first of all, I'm a product of a very old system of education, and I didn't grow up to be the kind of person that you are afraid the uh, present system is going to produce. Um, I didn't grow up frustrated, and I didn't resent the discipline that I got as a boy. And as a matter of fact, after a few years, I learned to respect the intention that lay behind a lot of it. Uh, what prompted me really to, uh, to ring in was a program this morning which dealt with a subject on town talk um, and the subject of um, education of citizenship and how to live was brought up and there was some comparison between the West and the East on this subject and whether too much freedom was actually causing our society to collapse morally. Now, what do you think of this, Richard? Well, um, uh, first, if Did I could... Did you hear the program this morning? No, I didn't, I'm afraid. Uh, oh. 
if I could uh, just uh, handle, I think I think there are basically two points here. Firstly, this um, question of, of you're not resenting the discipline, and in fact, uh, feeling that, uh, that that indeed it was a good thing. Uh, you're very lucky if you've if you've come out of this a, a well-adjusted person, but I, I don't think that that uh, because the system uh, uh, the system produces a few people who are well-adjusted that it should be um, patted on the back. I think uh, uh, another thing about this, of course, is that uh, this kind of argument's been offered against just about every advance in the history of civilization. For example, um, the freeing of the slave. Um, your other point about um, too much freedom is causing a moral collapse in our society. Well, um, from everything I can see, uh, certainly that there's a great uh, sort of moral dilemma in our society today, and it's, it's uh, touching every aspect of society. But I don't think that a moral collapse is underway. I think I think a moral renaissance is underway. And this is what um, Rene Mahara, the Secretary General of the um, United Nations uh, Organisation for Children, um, and said about the education system, he said that there's a great educational renaissance happening now and uh, instead of just ignoring change and pretending that it's going to disappear, uh, we should face it firmly and accept uh, this change as, as you know, um, heralding this great renaissance that's bound to come within the next decade. Well, uh, perhaps you may be right in that sense. I mean, there was a, um, a cultural revolution in China uh, which uh, has evidently produced some results, but uh, the remarks that were passed this morning indicate that unless there is a program of education and teaching people how to live, which will run in parallel with this increase in freedom of thought, that we're heading for disaster, just like other past civilizations have. If you've studied your history, mm. you'll know how many civilizations have risen and then fallen. Mm. And we're at that point now where we can do either one of those two things. Mm. And I've got a great deal of faith in you young people, you know. Well, that's very good. And thank you very much for your call. Thank good. you. Thank Goodbye. You. Uh, this, this one point that's come up time and time again, that. Uh, I mean, the, the subjects at school try and sidetrack uh, students off realities which they feel are uh, very important in the world around them. Uh, the Vietnam War is one um, searing example since we have the uh, national anti-war mobilization this Friday. Uh, and uh, I think uh, um, apartheid is another thing which secondary students are very concerned about. They show this by coming out on um, the apartheid demonstrations and this sort of thing. But, there's, there's no uh, education, there's no catering for this in the schools. Uh, there's a case um, we had on our files of a teacher in the North Island who, uh, when he came to school, um, he told us he was, he was given what was supposedly the general rundown that they give teachers, and this was that he wasn't allowed to speak on uh, Vietnam War, on apartheid, or on the Maori problem, and this was in a school where 30% of the students were Maori. So, you know, I mean, this, this sort of bring up the issues. That, that are very real to secondary students is, is one of the big disasters of our system. I mean, I was quite happy to respect my parents and my teacher. Mm. What they taught me, I just simply knew that they knew more than I did. They must know more than we do when we're kids. I mean, you know, the children today are 13, 14, 15. They, they, they've only had a few years in life, but mm. they will not be taught by elders but who've had the experience. Yes. You know, but my daughter, she's teaching this year, for the first time, and she can see what she's up against, that they just want pupil power, they're down with the teachers. Now why are they so rebellious? Well, I think uh, this sort of down with the teachers idea and, uh, you know, uh, smash the schoolroom and this sort of thing, yes. is, is this is sort of, uh, this is something that the present system's causing, I mean, if, if, you know, I mean, it, um, to look through history again, you, you only have to hunt, hunt through the history books, a very small way to see that um, people who are pushed down um, inside a society which is um, generally uh, free and democratic, uh, naturally rebel in, in absurd ways, you know. Yes. Uh, I mean, I know when I was at school, there was certainly there were those who rebelled, but we were, we were um, really prepared to listen to them. Mm. And they were the ones that were actually teaching us how to live. Well, I, I, don't, I think you're making
making a very broad generalization there, and I think oh, yes, could it, could yes. be? Yes, I, our, our, I think the people in our organization are very sincere in their desire to see uh, education uplifted, yes, not, not just yes, smashed. I agree there, um, and I, I think it, it does need to be uplifted somewhat too, but I do think that children, the power that children want is not their right. Well, I won't take any more time, because I'm sure enough to use the others. Thank you very much. Thank you. Goodbye. Well, one question that I see a lot of people are asking, and that is, what do you want to do when you've finished your schooling? Um, I want to grow up to be a politician. <laughs> well, actually, uh, I would like to be a teacher. <laughs> you would? Yes. Uh, very best of luck. <laughs> I'm sure everyone will join in the surprise. Good wish for that. I wonder though, thank you very much for coming in and I do hope that perhaps you'll come back sometime soon.